the Commodore 64. It was my first computer, and as such, now holds a special place in my heart and probably forevermore. Or at least until my mind, you know, goes on me. In all the years I had a Commodore 64, I never went online with it, not in a BBS, nothing. In fact, I didn't get online with a computer until the Commodore Amiga 600, and that is when I discovered the wonders of the internet. Thanks to the wonders of the internet and YouTube and whatnot, there are several content creators that have inspired me to take time to do more with my Commodore 64. So then I thought, can I get my Commodore 64 onto the World Wide Web, and I must be able to do at least IRC. I mean, right? It's not that complicated. It's been around forever. The goal became, without any modifications to the hardware, can I get my Commodore 64 under its own power, so that means using its 64 kilobytes of memory, to get on the internet and communicate via IRC. The two peripherals that I did purchase was an SD to IEC from the Futurez 8-bit and the RRNet Mark III from iCompDE. It took some searching, but I found the application that would get me online to chat in IRC with a Commodore 64, and that is the Contiki OS. There are a few different disk images for it. I chose the .d81 image, as that would eliminate my need to do any disk swapping on the SD to IEC. Since the Commodore 64 is the most plug and play computer ever, that's exactly what I did. I connected the SD to IEC to the disk port. And the RRNet Mark III into the cartridge expansion port. In order to get the Contiki OS to recognize the Ethernet port on the Commodore 64, I had to run the ethconfig application on the disk image. Now with the RRNet plugged into the Commodore 64, you do see a different start page, shows you the MAC address and so forth. To access the SD to IEC, I ran the load asterisk comma 8. Then I typed run and waited. And waited. I arrowed down to the Contiki OS dot D81 disk image. I then went to the ETH config program. Here's where you wait a while. I mean, it is a Commodore 64, and although it's coming off of an SD card, it still has all the encumberments of the slow disk access. So here I, you select number one, which is the RRNet. The only way to get out of this is to do a power cycle, and there is no reset button. Next was to run ipconfig to define the IP address of the Contiki OS system. So going back into the SD to IEC. The Contiki OS.81 image. And the IP config application. And wait for a while. Here we're going to be in inputting the IP address, netmask, gateway, and DNS server. So whenever it does actually show up, because you know this is a Commodore 64 and things take a long time, you know, to do what Commodore 64s do. And for really a very simple task, just setting the IP address, netmask, gateway. When you think about it though, it's, it is kind of funny how much you take for granted how quickly we can access this on, you know, the Plasma desktop or, or whatever. It's, it's literally just a right click config or click config. And here we're waiting for quite a long time. And we're talking bytes of information we're waiting to transfer. So I already filled it out here but I made sure I set the IP address to something I know was open on my network. In this case, .64. And finally, we can launch the IRC client. So again, load asterisk comma eight. Go into the file browser, if that's what you want to call it. Contiki C64 D81 image, and then down to the IRC. A little more patience is required. Now let's navigate down, hit F5 to go to the first line. I went to chat.freenode.net hit return or F7 to go to the next line, and then I put in my IRC nickname. Now make sure you use only lowercase letters and numbers. If you don't use a lowercase letter, it will say you have an invalid username. So wait for it to connect and 
spew all the information that is virtually impossible to read easily with the uh, the 40 column display. But don't worry, it's not too much easier with the 80 column display on the Commodore 64 either. I mean, you can read it, it's just, you know, it just doesn't look good. It's not formatted very nicely. And the slash join Octothorpe and then whatever group you want to go into. This, In this case, I'm going to the Big Daddy Linux Live group where I know that people know my name. Just as a demonstration, I want to show side by side a modern IRC client conversation on the Plasma desktop sitting on OpenSUSE and then the IRC client on the Commodore 64. In this case, you will see how the text is displayed on, on either client. Anytime you type anything on the Commodore 64 side, you hit enter, return. It's return on the Commodore 64, not enter, like it is on a modern computer. You will see that it shows up all capitalized on the C64 IRC client, but is all lowercase for the modern IRC client. Now the C64 client will be able to see the different cases, but it can't send the different cases. I don't know why, that's just how it is. Getting the Commodore 64 on the internet to do IRC under its own power doesn't take much. It takes a Commodore 64, an SD to IEC, I'm sure you can find something similar, an RRNet Mark III, some kind of a router, you know, because you need to be able to get internet to it, you know, and a CRT would be preferable, or any monitor really would be fine, and, you know, a good power supply, a, a desk, and really, when you have all those things plugged in, you're going to need some kind of a, you know, power center as well. Then you're going to need electricity, because you got to power the thing, and to pay for that, you, you need a job, and something to stay awake as you bang your head against the wall, figuring out what's not working properly and and one won't be enough so you're gonna have to probably have two or three or four or five or or more of the stimulants but once you get it all going and done you can have loads of fun with a Commodore 64 on the internet and you can really show some serious nerd cred once you get going with it you will realize the Commodore 64 is worth the wait thanks for watching <laughs>